lot of the physical ice breaking work is from sun up to sundown. And then a lot of the movement between locations is done at night. We try and avoid breaking ice at night, but occasionally we have to break ice at night because it's the only time period that we can get going. Sometimes you'll see a Canadian Coast Guard vessel not moving during the daytime, and it could be because they have operations coming that night. So they need to make sure that their crew is rested so that they're able to provide assistance during the nighttime when the commercial vessel is going to be transiting through the area. If it's a severe operation, the first ship on scene is usually the on-scene commander. Say there's a flood control operation happening in the St. Clair River. If we were there first, we would be the on-scene commander and would direct other ships on the operation. As we work together, we work closely with radio, cell phones, and mostly radios, as it is way faster to just communicate on-scene status and operations. Sometimes a ship will get stuck on a corner and we can break the main track and the, and the bait class can go around the boat and ease the pressure of the ice. They have an air bubbler system that works quite well and they're able to maneuver in really tight areas. It's kind of a symbiotic relationship with the U.S. We're really in sync together when we do work. From a physical standpoint, it's very difficult to read the pressure. You have to be able to physically see the ice in order to know here's the right path or here's the right angle, here's the wrong angle to take. And when you're very close and literally you're within feet of other icebreakers and other ships, you don't want to be doing that in the dark without a control of the element. Uh, wind changes, pressure changes in the ice, uh, shifting plates, those are all very uh, risky. So the more complications you add, the you drive up the risk. And so our job from a safety standpoint is to drive down that risk. 